my goodness, do I have an exciting review for you today. I've been anxiously awaiting to do this review. I'm at my parents' house right now. I'm going to be here for a few days while we're waiting for our stuff to arrive. So I had this shipped to my parents' house so that I could review it when I got here. It came really, really fast as Dior shipping always does. I got it on Monday. Today is Friday that I'm filming this, but I'm gonna be reviewing. I am <laughs> the Dior Forever Glow Star Filter. Charlotte Tilbury called and she wants to know what's up, okay? So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a comparison between these two, but for the most part, we're gonna be focusing on this. And then Dior also launched a liquid luminizer. These are the Forever Glow Maximizers. So lots of liquid glowy products in this launch, which typically I'm not a fan of a liquid luminizer, but Curiosity got the best of me. I just, I need to know how these products work. So let's get into it. We're first gonna start off with the Forever Glow Star Filter. Now all of these products are available on the Dior website right now. I don't see them at any other retailers currently, but they do say on the Dior website that it's limited stock though these have been in stock for over a week now so i don't know what stock amounts they have in mind here but apparently it is limited if you want to get your hands on it the exciting thing about it only being available on dior is the dior website is my favorite place to order anyways it comes in the most beautiful packaging you always get awesome gift with purchases i got this beautiful dior makeup pouch so excited about this and then i also got to select three little goodies this is why i always recommend to order from the dior website if you can it's worth it better than sephora so of let's get into this star filter here this is available in 10 different shades i picked up two shades zero and two and I'll be showing you those today. They are $55 each. This is not a cheap product, but it's Dior. We already knew that was going to be the case, but you know, I spent a pretty penny on these, so it better be good. So how do we use this? It's supposed to brighten, smooth, which is interesting for it being a glowy product, and blur, also interesting, the skin for a complexion that's more radiant than ever. It's a skincare makeup formula is supposed to hydrate the skin and can be worn in three ways on um, bare skin to bring out a natural glow to definitely testing it that way mixed with your forever skin glow foundation to a boost radiance so i packed my skin glow i don't have it for today's review but i'm going to use it with a very matte foundation to see if we can tell the difference or applied in touches after foundation to highlight areas on the face. I probably won't try it that way today because I do have liquid luminizers to use. It's supposed to give a no makeup effect. And they do suggest that the Skin Glow Foundation is the foundation to pair with it if you do have the Dior line, which the Skin Glow Foundation is amazing if you haven't tried it. Let's get into it now. It's going to come in the classic Dior box. And here is what the packaging looks like. So they're also marketing with the Charlotte Tilbury that this is a multi-use product. One fluid ounce, very typical, and made in France. Okay, let's swatch these. I'm going to start off with shade zero. It is a pump applicator, as you can see. So I have half a pump of zero here. That looks very pretty. I'm going to do a direct comparison with shade number two from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Hollywood Flawless Filter, which I do believe Dior is definitely inspired by. I do have shade number one, but I think I packed it, you guys. So sorry about that. But here's how it compares to shade number two. Shade number two is more skin tone colored, but compare the finishes here. We're getting more of a pearlescent glow from Dior, but that might have to do with the shade. I did want that number two shade from Charlotte Tilbury in between zero, and then I'm going to put two from Dior right here. I like that this is a pump though. So here is shade number two from Dior. It looks a lot closer to shade number two from Charlotte Tilbury. Honestly, very, very similar to Charlotte Tilbury, but I will say 
Even on my arm, the Dior feels much more hy hydrating. From just what I can feel from the swatches here, Dior does feel more skincare-like, like it's a little bit more of a serum base here. Charlotte Tilbury sets down more, which might make it better for oily skin. Charlotte Tilbury seems to have a little bit more of a metallic glow, but the Dior, I think, is giving more pigment and color. So that's the difference that I can tell via swatch. Let's get the Dior on the face. Now I will absolutely update you on how Dior versus Charlotte Tilbury is side by side. I just don't want to do that today since I don't have my whole collection here, but I will keep you updated on that when I'm able to and I am all unpacked. So I'm going to apply it the way that they recommend before any foundation. I'm gonna put it all over my face. I'm going to use number two because this is closer to my skin tone. So I have about a half a pump here. Let's see how it goes with finger. So number two is a little bit light on me. I feel like number three could work. It's not giving much coverage, but it does feel quite hydrating and it blends in really nice with the finger. I was surprised that this said it was going to be hydrating, but it's true. The consistency is different to the Charlotte Tilbury, where the Charlotte Tilbury feels a bit dry on the skin. I'm going to use this hourglass brush to blend it out. I think I like it better than a finger. I was a bit dubious of when it said this is a skincare makeup hybrid but it definitely feels like it now that i'm applying it it has more of a skincare feel which i think makes it quite different from the charlotte tilbury so here is one layer can you see the glow that this gives it almost looks like i put skincare on my skin and that skincare leaves a glowy look charlotte tilbury looks more metallic on the face this one has more of a sheer coverage but more of a luminous finish as opposed to a metallic finish which the charlotte tilbury sometimes can give i think the charlotte tilbury gives a little bit more coverage as well but that's not to say that this didn't even out the skin tone a little bit because honestly it really did i'm gonna do another pump on my hand i'm not quite doing a full pump but i'm liking a brush to apply this as opposed to fingers so the brush did just soak up all of the product. I'm going to need to use a little bit more. So you need less to pump out if you use your fingers. But I think the brush looks prettier and more soft on the skin. It definitely gives a more natural glow from within look using a brush as opposed to the fingers. While I do think they definitely were inspired by Charlotte Tilbury, in that boardroom, they were like, how can we make it different? How can we make it something else from the Charlotte Tilbury? And it is more skin carry, more sheer, but more of a luminous look as opposed to a metallic dry down. Honestly, it's stunning. How pretty does this look? Would I wear this out alone? I could, but I'd prefer not to. I actually would wear this on its own with concealer, but just like this, it is a bit reflective for my preferences, but it can be done. If you really like that glowy look, I think you would enjoy it. There is a little bit of a soft, tacky feel to my skin. Maybe not tacky, but wet is a better way of describing it. But it feels very, very hydrating, which I was not expecting from this product. So that's really nice, and it does blend in like a serum-y kind of feel. That's very interesting. I can't wait to do a side by side of this, but I do think the effect is similar, the purpose is similar, how you use it is similar, but the finish and feel on this skin is quite different. I'm gonna go in with number two, zero, excuse me, zero. Yeah, and where I had all of the product on my skin, it's kind of soaked in like a skincare product would. It doesn't really just stay there. And I'm going to put this on the high points of my face, since this is the lighter colored product. You definitely don't need a lot of shades of these. They're very, very sheer. Honestly, I think if you just pick up one, you're good to go. With the Charlotte Tilbury, I like having multiple colors because I feel like they add different dimensions and depths to the face. This is a product where I truly feel you only 
need one. You can see a little bit of the brightness that Zero added, so it's nice to have it, but it's not as impactful as the Charlotte Tilbury would be if I put number three on the face and then number one on the high points. So that's a good thing though, because these are $55 each. You only need one, probably like a little lighter than your skin tone. But you can see where I put it on my hand, it's just barely there now. It's kind of soaked in. My hand is feeling hydrated. Next way to apply it is mixed in with foundation. They do recommend with the skin glow, but I thought a good way to try it would be mixed in with a matte foundation. So I'm just going to use the Catrice HD liquid coverage, like a $5 foundation with a $55 product. So I'm actually going to mix it in with number zero because this is slightly dark on me. So I'm going to start off with Catrice. We're going to do two drops on the top of my hand and then we'll do 50-50 of zero from Dior. I'm gonna mix that around. Normally when I do this technique, I've got to be honest with you guys, I don't notice much of a difference. I feel like a lot of times the foundation will eat up the glow. So if I don't really notice a difference, I will be honest, I'm not too bothered by that, but we did about a 50-50 mix here. So what I am picturing happening with this, with the mix together, is it's going to give the foundation a lighter weight feel because this Catrice foundation is pretty full coverage on its own. It's more of a matte finish. I think that this is going to thin it out and lighten everything up. Now we do have that luminous base down below, so it's going to be difficult to tell if mixing it in even did anything. Again, I will test this off camera and give you guys the updates as they come, especially in my speed reviews. I apologize that this can't be too in-depth of a review. If you missed it, I'm going through like a cross-country move right now, and so I'm squeezing in time when I can to play with the makeup. What do you guys think? Honestly, I do think mixing it in did a little something to the finish of the foundation. I really, really do. Um, all of this glow though, it's beginning to look not very flattering. Didn't smooth over everything. Now this foundation is a little bit heavier duty. It doesn't normally smooth the skin out really, but it provides a great coverage. It's more of a matte finish. I was hoping that it would add some hydration here, which I think it did. But with all of this glow, it is emphasizing some texture. So for me, the best way to apply this product is one or the other. I normally like to go in with this glowy base first and then the foundation over top, making it a thinner layer so you can see the glow peeking through. But it's definitely a softer effect than the Charlotte Tilbury as it's set in. Now I'm gonna go in, I'm not gonna mix it. I don't know if I'll be able to tell the difference, but I'm gonna put the foundation on top. I definitely got a little bit of a better color match by mixing in the shade zero of this foundation. So it did affect the color, which is interesting. Oh my gosh, you know what I'm looking, mixing in the Dior product definitely changed the effect of this foundation. So it is powerful enough to do that. It changed the color. I did do a 50-50 mix, but it changed the color and it added more of a glowy finish. I don't know if you notice this side is just so much more glowy than the side with just the foundation on top. Oh, honestly, that is really cool that it did that. So what do we think? Can you guys tell a difference? This side is definitely more glowy where I mix the foundation in, whereas I can see the true finish of how the foundation is supposed to be. So you can alter your foundations, but I do actually really like that 50-50 mix to really be able to tell. I have more coverage on this side, so it did lighten up the coverage that the Catrice gave me. Honestly, a really cool way to manipulate foundations. Okay, let's talk liquid highlighter. In what mindset was I in? I bought four of the Dior Forever Glow Maximizers, which they do emphasize, limited availability. Now I'm looking, I did not need to buy four of the six shades. But the reason that I did was because they say this is also a multi-purpose product. So it's a liquid highlighter to brighten and enhance the complexion, blah, 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 long-lasting glow. They always claim it's long-lasting. But they say you can use it on the eyes to highlight, to blush, 
and to bronze, which led me to purchasing four of the six shades. I might as well have gotten a bronze shade. I didn't, but you can wear it alone, finishing touch to make up. I want to see also how it's different to the star filter. But let me swatch them for you. Uh, just quick details though. Here's the box that it comes in. Here is the packaging. It has 0.37 fluid ounces and it's made in France. And you guys, these are $45 each. That is really expensive for a liquid luminizer. So I was so curious. I had to see what pearly looked like and it does have that doe foot applicator. So pearly is this luminescent light shade. And I swatched these earlier and I did notice the finish of this one is a bit different than the others. There's almost micro glitters in here. Super duper micro, not anything chunky by any means. It's honestly not offensive at all, but it, it's more glittery than the rest. Then we have gold, which I'm worried might be too deep on me. Let's see, um, I might have to give this to my mom. I don't know if you can see the difference between pearly and gold, but pearly just has more glimmer, shimmer, and glow to it. Then I picked up pink, very original names here. Again, more of a flat finish compared to pearly. And then the last one is going to be a great highlight on deeper complexion. On me, they were saying I could use this as blush. So we'll give that a try. But that right there is rosy. They look very pretty, but pearly is the only one that I'm noticing has like a wet, glittery effect to it. Without further ado, let's get them on the face. I'm gonna start off with the one that I'm least excited about, which is gold. I don't know if there's gonna be a cast on my skin with this or not. I'm just gonna use my finger. I think this one is going to my mom, but it doesn't seem to have much of an extra reflection compared to the star filter. I mean, it's a little bit more metallic, but as I've pushed it in, you really can't see it on my face at all. The color itself is stronger, the level of pigment is stronger, but in terms of the finish, it's not much more glowy than the star filter, but it doesn't feel like a Surmi or a skin carry. It feels like a true liquid luminizer, but it's more of a soft, luminous finish, which I think those of you with mature skin would appreciate. Let's see pink on this side. Oh, it's quite pastel -y, is it not? Okay, this one is a little bit more my speed compared to the gold, and I'm just using this brush to push it in. And I don't have any powder on my face or anything. That one is, again, a little bit more my speed color-wise, but it is more of a natural glow, which means we need to see what pearly is gonna do. So I'm just gonna do a little dot of that. They say you can put this on the eyes as well. This one, yeah, I can see. It just, it has more glitter in there, but not chunky. It's not offensive, like I said. But that adds the extra bounce of light, I would say. I feel like more of a natural liquid luminizer, except for pearly, you'll like this. I never really jump for joy about liquid luminizers, so it's kind of eh to me but it's not disrupting anything underneath and it does give more bounce than the star filter and more color. Okay, moment of truth. I do need to test this as a blush. I'm so excited. I wonder how it would compare to like the Pillow Talk blush from Charlotte Tilbury, the one in the tube that's all glimmery. So I'm using my hourglass brush. Yeah, this has a lot of pigment here. They have some pretty deep shades that you could look into. Another pretty one is bronze. I guess that one is more for of a contour. I should have tried that. But I picked up all the other colors, so. I would say for my skin tone, gold is my only regret. I would switch it out for bronze if I could. But that makes such a pretty luminous blush. It was pretty easy to blend in. And it is looking like the Charlotte Tilbury blushes that are in the tube, that are glowy. It is very interesting to see this luxury brand really going for it with the inspo from another brand. 
that I'll be honest, I feel like Charlotte Tilbury was the first to create a product like this. I like this packaging better than Charlotte Tilbury. I just feel like it's less icky. I mean, really pretty. Not for the faint of heart, if you don't like glow, if you don't like how a glow emphasizes texture, this isn't going to be your girl. It's not going to revolutionize glowy products because you are seeing some texture on the skin, but it doesn't make it look any worse. Like there's products out there that definitely emphasize stuff I don't want emphasized more than these. They're high quality products, they really are. Now they did say, and this is just a quick aru thing I'm gonna go over, can use these on the eyes. I'm going to use pink on the eye. Let's see what this does. I don't see it doing too much, right? It just adds a sheer layer of glow. Probably should go in with pearly instead. So we'll keep it fair. But it just adds a little bit of ice there on the eyes. A little bit of glow. A little something something. But I do think pearly would be better in this situation. I can't wait to use these products a little bit more individually so I can really see how they act instead of layering upon layering. Honestly, these feel really good on the eyelid. They don't feel drying, but they don't really do much. When they say you can put it on the eyes, very subtle, not really how I would use it. Okay, I'm gonna finish the rest of my makeup and we'll close out my first impressions. Here's the final makeup look. I look dewy, I look glowy. I have some mixed opinions about these products from Dior. So far, I'm really enjoying the Glow Star Filter. I think that it's different enough from the Charlotte Tilbury. They do a similar thing. You can have one or the other, but like if you like more of an intense glow, more of a metallic glow, it's a little bit better more for oily skin in terms of consistency. Charlotte Tilbury might be the way for you. If you like something softer, I think more mature skin, drier skin would appreciate the glow star filter it does have that skincare hybrid feel to it the dior also provides less coverage on the face i definitely want to play with the dior a lot more i feel like this is a product that definitely needs multiple wears now i'm not really feeling as much the glow maximizers i think these are a nice product but they are 45 dollars do keep in mind i'm not a liquid highlighter fan to begin with i liked rosy rosy's my favorite I really enjoy this as a soft, luminous blush. It does remind me a lot of the Charlotte Tilbury. I do want to do a comparison because I can't say too much until I can use them side by side. And then in terms of actual luminizing, I think Pearly's my favorite. It's the one with the strongest effect. These are more natural. If natural is your thing, you actually will like these. These don't have too much reflection. They're not too metallic. So they're softer than the Charlotte Tilbury liquid highlighters are as well. So if you're into the softer look, the more natural look, the Dior might be for you. But for $45 each, I know Dior, you're paying a lot. You don't go in buying Dior thinking you're gonna get a good deal. But in terms of value, as somebody who enjoys spending money at Dior, the luminizers, I don't really feel the need to purchase anymore. Even though I did purchase most of the colors, if I could do it all over again, I would just get rosy and pearly and I'd be happy with that. So anyways, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel. I'll continue to update you as I use these more and in different ways. I hope today's video was helpful for you. If you've tried any of these products, please share your experience down below. Are you enjoying these products? Let me know. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel for more. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.